this is unit four, day two. We're just working 11 through 19 together, starting with 14 uh, as a, a warm up problem. So, find the slope of the line tangent to the curve, so we're finding dy dx. calculus step. Now it's algebra. Uh, hopefully your algebra is good enough to um, skip a, a step or two at a time. You don't want to be flying through and skip too many, but you also don't want to take the time to write down every single step, hopefully. So I move my dy dx stuff over to the left and factor out a dy dx. <coughs> I move everything else to the right. So 18x minus 2xy squared. And then I'll just divide by all of this stuff. And that is a safe stop. There's a little bit more to do. What else could you do? And I'm sure the multiple choice would do the next step. You see anything else you could simplify algebraically? What would you do? Yeah, I can divide everybody by 2. So 9x minus xy squared over x squared y minus 8y. Uh, as you're working these, depending on which side you move things to, you need to be able to see that this would be the same thing as, uh, if, so if you multiplied everybody by negative 1, you can switch the order. So if you got xy squared minus 9x over 8y minus x squared y, that's the same thing. And it, either one is equally correct, but you need to recognize both because either one of them could be the multiple choice answer. There's not really a better format there. It would only matter like which side we move dy dx to. It would affect who's positive and who's negative. But your algebra skills need to be such that you recognize that those are the same thing. Let's do number 15 together. Which of the following is the equation of a tangent line? So I need a point and a slope if I'm doing a tangent line. The point they just give me, pi over 2 comma pi over 4, slope will be the derivative at that point. So I need to take a derivative of this weird looking equation. There's only two sides so I can, I can pull two popsicle sticks anyway. Um, Grenier, how about the derivative of tangent of y? Okay, but I need you to be more specific because the answer is not just secant squared. And that's not wrong. Secant squared of y. dy dx. So be careful. I know when you memorize the derivative tangent, your brain just thinks derivative tangent secant squared. And that's fine. But secant squared of the argument times the derivative of the argument. That's a lot to say every time, so we never ever say that but we need to make sure we get the argument and the derivative of the argument. Bryce, how about the derivative of sine of x? Cosine of x. Cosine of x. <coughs> uh, that's correct. If you really want to go chain rule, you could do times 1. If you want to, want to you know, overkill it with it, making sure you chain rule every time. So dy dx equals cosine of x over secant squared of y. So that's um, secant squared. Let's let's fix secant. I don't want to mess with secant. What is secant the same thing as? Who is he partners with? Cosine? 
So I'm going to just rewrite this as cosine of y times cosine squared of y. So you can flip that to the top. Be careful though, because one of them's of x and one of them's of y. So that's not cosine cubed. We've just got to leave it x and y. So cosine pi over 2, cosine pi over 4 squared. Okay, let's see. Pi over 2 is right there. Oh, well, this just got easier. Because what's the cosine of pi over 2? coordinate at pi over 2. So you're saying it and showing it 0. So then it doesn't really matter what cosine of pi over 4 is. dy dx is 0. So my slope is 0. I can still write the point slope form. y minus pi over 4 equals 0 times x minus pi over 2. Obviously, that is not the most simplified uh, form of that, that line, but it still works as a first step. Zero wipes all this out. Move the pi over 4 over, and we get y equals pi over 4, which means that, that at this point, there is a horizontal tangent line. couple reasons to work that problem. One was a little bit of trig, a little bit of algebra, a little bit more of trig unit circle stuff, and then what happens if slope to zero sort of messes things up, but it actually simplifies things. All right, one more I wanted to look at. Things start getting a little repetitive because it's it's always the same steps. Let's look at number 18. Find the instantaneous rate of change. So again, we're just using all the different phrases to make sure you know them all for dy dx. Okay, so the derivative of e to the x squared y is e to the x squared y. But then chain rule, I need the derivative of x squared y. which would be a product rule thing. So first times derivative of the second plus second times derivative of the first. Oh, this is going to be algebra yuck because i got a dy dx buried in there. Minus the derivative of this thing, e to the x plus y. Chain rule, I need the derivative of x plus y. Amy, what's the derivative of x plus y? We'll go one at a time. What's the derivative of x? One. And what's the derivative of y? dy dx. And then on the other side, Addy, what's the derivative of 2x? One of those where no single step is really all that hard, but there were two e to the x type problems, so two chain rule things. Within the chain rule was a product rule, so just lots of stuff going on. Um, trying to find dy dx when x is 0. So I guess this is where, again, algebra teachers probably solve for dy dx. Math students probably just plug in x equals 0 and see what happens. <coughs> um, let's plug in x equals 0. This is going to wipe out a bunch of stuff. So e to the 0, 0 times dy dx plus 0 minus e to the y, 1 plus dy dx. Equals 2. Alright, 
So that first term, all of that's just wiped out. Don't have to worry about that. Uh, I got an e to the y in there, and I don't know what y is. So if I don't know what y is, how do I figure out what y is? How do you usually figure out what y is? If you know x. Guys are quiet this morning. Monty, what do you think we can do to figure out what y is? I know what x is. I'd like to know what y is. I have this equation up here that relates x and y. Somebody help her out. Pardon? Uh, I don't know what it is right now. I need to plug it in. I need to plug in 0 into x to figure out what y is. Trying to get away without doing it, but I need to I need to know what y is. So let's plug in zero for x. So e to the y. Nope, that's e to the zero. Minus e to the y equals zero. Right, because if x equals zero, I get zero for that new for that exponent, I get y for that exponent, I get zero on the other side e to the 0 is 1. I'll move e to the y over. So if e to the y is 1, what does y have to be? 0. Okay, so there was some extra algebra work, sort of hidden algebra work in this problem. They gave me x. I had to go figure out what y is. But now we know why, so we can jump back into our equation here. E to the 0 is 1. So negative 1 minus dy dx equals 2. So if I move things around, I'll add dy dx to the other side, subtract 2 over, dy dx is negative 3. some ways there's nothing new in this in this lesson on implicit differentiation because you already know the chain rule you already know product rule you know your algebra but you just got to put it all together and keep up with everything uh, all right so the point of doing that one was to remind you about e to the x derivatives and to see one where we had to plug in x to get y so that we could actually get toward our answer all right, today's assignment is uh, the same worksheet, 11 through 19. And we just did three of them, so you're down to six of them.